Good evening, everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful holiday. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, welcome to the Brotherhood of Gaming. I'm William Morris, and I'm here to talk about something we usually don't talk about a whole lot on this channel, and that would be indie games. I don't have any particular reason as to why we ignore indie games all that much. It's it's not that there's any bias against them. I mean, there really isn't. It's just not something we generally go to right away. But I did decide to take the leap, and what I found was rather interesting. You see, during the month of Halloween, uh, I tend to like to go into the horror genre and find something to get me in the mood. You know how it is. But... I find that in this day and age, it really is very difficult to find something that we really haven't already played. I mean, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, e even the hidden gems that are out there for the PlayStation 2, like Hunting Ground, are games that I've already dived in. It just didn't feel like there was anything left, so I had no choice but to go to the indie scene. And, of course, we always knew about Slender Man, and, of course, there's the famous Five Nights at Freddy's. But... I think I got lucky this time, and with the help of some friends, I found a new one. And uh, it's called Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia is the ghost hunting haunted house did you see that brainchild of Kinetic Games, a small UK indie company. It was released on Steam on September 18th, 2020, so it's been out for a little over a month now. Interest quickly multiplied in this title, and as of today, it has nearly 60,000 reviews on Steam and a 97% positive rating. So it's pretty clear that it's hyped, it's intrigued, and delighted by a lot of folks. But is it really that great? Is it scary? Do you get your money's worth? Now that we've uh, talked about the game just a tad bit, let's go all in. So yes, friends, get your pumpkin guys out, get your jack-o'-lanterns, get your candy, and let's talk horror games. The concept of Phasmophobia is pretty straightforward. As far as storylines go, there actually isn't one. You, the player, are called to investigate claims of paranormal activity in a handful of abandoned homes and buildings. You've got the key to the door, as well as whatever gear and items you've brought along with you to try and root out just what it is that's terrorizing people. You can go it solo, or with up to three other players for a maximum team of four. Just so that you all know, a microphone and or a headset is required to play the game. You're going to obviously need it in order to communicate with your teammates, but even more so, some of the equipment that you bring along will require some voice recognition in order to function. Sadly guys, there is no way around this. Playing with someone who can't verbally speak to you is not going to be at all helpful, so if you do plan to play this game, I just want to make it clear right away, you will be primarily playing with others, so having the right setup is just about mandatory. Upon playing, you'll see that right away the graphics aren't what you'd call cutting edge, but for the purpose of investigating a haunted domain, they do the job just fine, so it's nothing to worry about. After selecting your mission, the main task each time is to identify just what type of ghost is present. You determine that by looking for clues from a bunch of your basic tools. You've got a spirit box to which you tune into radio frequencies and ask the ghost to talk back to you. You've got an EMF reader, which reads spectral energy readings when the ghost has been through an area that left traces of its activity. There's a UV flashlight to look for handprints or fingerprints should the ghost or whatever come into contact with anything from the environment. Video cameras to which you can place anywhere you want inside the building to get a good view of the landscape and hopefully catch something in view, which you can hang back in the safe zone of the van and watch for any signs of activity. Thermal thermometers to check for cold temperatures, and even open journals you can spread around to see if the specter will write down any messages. This is only a handful of the available tools you can unlock and buy in order to use at your leisure. When you first start the game, you're not going to have much to work with beyond the basic starter set, but the more you play, the more items will eventually make their way into your inventory. That's in a nutshell how the game goes. The moment you begin the game, you, the player, are dropped off in this little safe zone to experiment with your controls before you choose to tackle a ghost haunting, either solo or online. From there, your main objective is to piece together three bits of evidence present that will tell you what kind of spirit is doing the haunting. Sometimes you can get them pretty easily, however, there are other times where you will have to really hunt around. See, ghosts vary in how showy they are in their activities. Some make their presence known all over, others are a bit shyer and like to bide their time and waste yours. Or, it's also possible that environmental factors can weigh in. When you select the stage and you arrive on site, you and or the other players will be outside the house or building inside the safe zone of the truck where all of the equipment is. The whiteboard will give you some optional objectives that you can do on the side as well as the main ones. 
which will net you a bigger reward upon completing the level. The other monitors have their own uses as well, like keeping an eye on the sanity level of the players, which yes, if they do get too low, does make them and potentially you more susceptible to a direct attack. There's also the activity monitor, which will keep tabs on how aggressive the ghost currently is. Also inside the van is the surveillance monitor that I mentioned earlier. Usually, depending on the level of difficulty the stage is, there's generally a brief window of time that will allow you to pick up whichever three items you can hold at a time and strategically place them where you think they should go, before the ghost becomes active to the point that you gotta be wary. Sometimes, as a safety strategy, we like to pile up the best equipment right next to the front door of the building, just so we don't have to waste more time trekking all the way back to the van just to nab something different. This does work out well in the long run, because thankfully, no matter what, as long as you are not inside the abandoned establishment, you are safe. The ghost cannot tread outside, so take advantage of that if you can. While inside, hunting for clues is going to be your immediate concern. However, because of the nature of the game, be it if you choose to play solo or with friends, you are probably not going to feel like staying in the building any longer than necessary. As you place items down and open up cupboards, you could occasionally come across some findings, like a random bone on the ground, which you can take a picture of for some extra cash, or you could even find a Ouija board. Oh boy, here we go. The Ouija boards I find are on the rarer side of things you can find, but should you come across one, you could use it to ask the ghost or demon where it's lurking and even ask its age. Not that that would matter much. Aside from that, using the ghost's actual name on the spirit box along with the Ouija board can aggravate the ghost a lot faster, putting the whole game at risk. The thing is, while you're hunting for these, you might just tick off the ghost enough so that it goes into a hunt of its own. And trust me, when that happens, all hell breaks loose and nobody is safe. When a ghost hunts, it's out to kill you or the saps you're playing with. We got dirty water, ew, it's gross. Oh, oh, oh hell no, oh hell no, oh me. No, 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 no. All the doors to the exits become locked, effectively trapping you inside until the ghost either kills someone or its hunting phase ends. Now, how the ghost hunts may also provide clues into what kind of ghost is lurking about, but let's be honest, when that ghost begins messing with the flashlights indicating that it's on a prowl, everyone's immediate response is going to be the same. PANIC! When that ghost is hunting, one would probably ask, is there any way to defend yourself? Oh, my poor viewers. Sadly, not really. You have a crucifix item that you can purchase and by placing it on the ground, should the ghost walk over it, it could potentially ward it off. But even then, there are no promises here. I mean, there's also the lighter and smudge sticks, which if you use them prior to the ghost hunt will attempt to ward it off even longer. But like the crucifix before, it's not a guarantee. The only sound advice that I can give you is that when those lights start flashing, go into the nearest room or closet, turn off all the lights, huddle into a corner, and be absolutely quiet and still. The ghost may be a deadly spirit, but it's not omnipotent. It has to look for you, and if you're lucky, it won't find you. If you are unlucky and caught by the ghost, oh trust me, you'll know it. The icy hands of death will be upon you, and suddenly you will be a ghost yourself. Now, just because you're dead doesn't technically mean the game is over for you. Well, unless you were playing solo. But no, now that you are a ghost, you can still access your own journal and claim a few rewards should you guess what the ghost is. However, as a ghost, you can no longer talk to your teammates or interact with anything. Well, kind of the price of being dead, you know? Hey, look guys, the honest truth is, avoiding ghosts isn't easy at all because all of them act differently. I was actually surprised at how many different types of ghosts there are. I mean, you got phantoms, jinns, demons, banshees, poltergeists, spirits, mares, reverence, shades, onimushas, and yuris, all of which have their own specific set of rules on how they act and spook. All I can say is running and hiding are your options, so good luck. Should you still be alive and figure out what the ghost is based on your findings, you could just leave right there and collect your small reward, but I would suggest at least attempting to do some of the optional objectives too. Some are definitely easier to pull off like getting a reading on an EMF or having the ghost be detected by a motion sensor, but some of these objectives are definitely on the harder side when it comes to obtaining them. It's sometimes even impossible, like getting a photo of dirty water in a sink which is completely out of your control and may not happen at all. There are also some optional objectives 
factors that can even put you at risk, like trying to lure the ghost out in order to get a photo of it, or maybe even trying to have it trigger an event. At that point, it's really up to you and your teammates to decide whether or not you want to try to go for it. Besides, just the regular objectives of finding out what the ghost even is can be hard enough, to the point that you may just have to guess if you can't find that final elusive clue. Which brings me to the stages. As of right now, the game is still fairly new, and I think it's pretty clear it's another one of those cases where the creator had no idea how popular this game would get. So for right now, there's only about eight or so different locations you can explore, with a handful of them being just simple variations. Three different houses, three different log cabins, a high school, and an asylum. Personally, I think the houses and log cabins are fine, and their sizes are adequate. I say that because your character can't really do much. You don't even have the ability to jog or sprint or anything like that. You can only walk and walk slightly faster by holding down the shift key. Which for the houses I think is fine because they're not big to begin with, but the giant places like the school and the asylum in my opinion are a little too big for their own good. Having to trek through these giant places alone is already a bit of a chore just to set up the equipment because you aren't going to know where the ghost is for some time, and it's not hard to get lost in these places because there's just not much in terms of landmarking to give you an idea of where you have been. It's a low budget game after all, so assets are reused left and right, so unless you've got a good sense of direction, prepare to get lost. If there was one benefit to this, because the places are that big, the ghost tends to not wander too far from the specific room it likes to haunt. That doesn't mean that it can't, but just that it likely won't. After a successful game, once you've acquired all that you need, returning to the van and closing it will end the stage. Then you will find out if you were correct in figuring out what the ghost was, and then be rewarded cash and experience points based off your findings. The amount of money you make in this game is, without question, laughable at best. So much so that you really wonder why in the hell you guys are doing these jobs putting your lives on the line for a measly thirty dollars yeah i gotta tell you after this first paycheck that job at mcdonald's ain't looking too bad right now but this is also why i suggest going out of your way to take as many photos as you can of proof of the paranormal and trying to complete those optional objectives because all of it will add to your end game total which can result well over one hundred dollars after getting more cash and experience points, you will unlock more items that you can purchase with the cash to take along with you on the hunts. They all have some use for either identifying where a ghost is, or in a few cases, staving it off. Those are your smudge sticks, for example, and crucifixes, and maybe even some salt for a wraith. Yeah, we're not too sure about that one. There are also some sanity pills that restore your sanity, and trust me, you're going to need those especially for the larger maps. Now, when all is said and done, at the end of the day, is phasmophobia fun? In my honest opinion, yes. Do not get me wrong, it's definitely a tense game, even more so when you are playing by yourself. You never quite know if the ghost is ramping up for a hunt, so you're looking around, trying to be as quick and efficient as you can in gathering information. You're far more likely to be jittery when you're solo, because it's just you for a target, but it can be easier to find the indicators, so there is that nice trade-off. The fun, however, comes when you're playing in groups. You can always play with random people online, but the experience you'll get from that is, well, random. Sometimes you'll have a good group, other times you'll get players that either don't talk, or delight in taking off the ghost and hopefully trying to get you killed, or the occasional hacker. You know, usual crap from players who don't know how to play as a team. The real fun is when you are playing the game with people that you know. Because of this, the experience will be less scary overall, and you really will learn to polish your teamwork and communication. There's less salt from a stranger, plus you tend to have a lot of laughs and fun moments. Well, I don't have the box. You have I, yeah, give us a sign. Mother who did that? <laughs> I don't know who just subscribed, but it was loud as hell and it scared the ever-living hell out of me. Motion sensor. You and I both have spirit boxes, so we're kind of redundant. Ah! So I take it. Oh, I saw it in the attic. That scared the sh out of me, man. Oh God, I see it. Oh, ah, 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 I see it. I see it. Oh God, it's ugly. It's an eight. It's ugly okay, is what it is. It's in the bathroom. Oh. I'm looking at it. I'm, oh God. I have witnessed some. Which bathroom? The one upstairs furthest in the house. The one that would take you the longest time okay. to get out of. So yeah, I have, oh, I have seen the light. <laughs> okay, put down a journal. 
Oh god. Who made noises? Uh, might have been me. I was no, walking around. No, I saw somebody like, oh god. Ah! I can't even acknowledge who did something in my stream because I'm scared! That's nine. Have a member of your team witness a ghost event. Well, we'll leave that one for George. Yeah. You just want me to die. I would, have, I would never want you to die. That's so rude of you to say that. But if it has to happen to somebody... That's so rude of you to think I would want you to die. I, I'm just insulted that you would think that I would have your value be set at just dying. That's awful of you. <laughs> you deserve to die for that. That's nine. <laughs> You're at nine right now. Be careful. Okay, I am... Wow. Oh, you left me in the house, you son of a bitch! You left How me. else do I know the activity level? I hate you. How else am I going to know that you are going to die? Let me in. Let me in! It just feels like a very different, yet very fun enriching experience. To us, that's all the more enjoyable. You get to watch your friends have meltdowns. They freak out. You freak out. You tease each other, calling each other names, and all that fun stuff. Right button. Um, I didn't see it. I, oh, there it is. It's right behind you. It's my witty. Witty. It's right behind you. Oh, it got you. Oh, it got I died bending over. <laughs> Assume the position. Now, we have to emphasize, yes, you have those three tells, those indicators for the ghost, but you also start to get clued in by their little behaviors, how often they hunt, who they go after how fast they hunt, how they interact with objects and lights, how active they are in general, and where they roam. You start to get a sense for what type it could potentially be. And that helps if you can't find all three of those clues. Hey, sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. While I did complain about the larger maps earlier, they are more often great for a group challenge. You have a lot of ground to cover and it can take a while, but once you start to zero in, there's a definite sense of satisfaction and teamwork. And even if one of you dies, your teammate can still be useful. They can watch for ghost orbs back at the van, even if they physically can't do anything. They can still monitor the ghost activity and keep you in tune with what's going on. Well, that's of course if you're using the Discord servers for communication and not the game itself. Hell, and even after fooling around a little while, you can even learn a few exploits and neat little tricks. Now this game is still young and officially early access, so we're hoping for lots of additions in the future. We've even talked about some of the kinds of maps that we'd like to see added. Maybe a haunted forest, maybe a haunted pizzeria, or maybe even amusement parks or other unique establishments. But besides all that, me and my friends have gotten together a bunch of nights enthusiastically to play this together. It was a great time and it was a really great game to discover for a scary addition to horror titles. Yes, some of it comes from jump scares, but a lot of it's just from the overall tension in trying to survive during hunts and never quite knowing when the hunt is coming. So it's far more than just a simple jump scare that gets you here. Bottom line, Phasmophobia shows a lot of promise. The price isn't too bad either, with its set retail on Steam only being $13.99. I'd say this game is definitely affordable and worth checking out. Let's just hope the creators keep the momentum going. All right, wrap it up. You got your uh, journals to all checked up? Yep. Yep. Well, there you guys have it. That was my review of Phasmophobia, a game that, once again, I truly do feel like it has potential and possibly lasting appeal should the creator hop on it and strike while the iron's hot and make some quality of life improvements as well as maybe add a few additional levels. Only time will tell. Who knows, maybe we'll have the next Five Nights at Freddy's. So, thank you guys once again. I'm William Morris from the Brotherhood of Gaming. Thank you for watching. And if you liked this video, you can support it by doing multiple things. You can like the video, you can comment on the video, you can do my favorite thing, you can even share the video so that other people can check it out. And if you want to support us even further, the good news, you can subscribe to the channel, you can click the bell notification icon, and hey, guess what guys, we're live streaming more, so you can definitely follow us on our Twitch page, and hopefully you can catch us when we're live, we've got schedules in the works, who knows, we've, we've got a whole lot going on, it's pretty exciting, I think 2021 is going to be a good year for us, so hope to see you guys there, thank you so much for watching, see you next time, what's going to be the next review, let us know below, tell us, what do you want to see?